Longtime viewers of the channel may know that I have an interest in generalizations of the derivative, and I learned about a new one today known as the arithmetic derivative. Or this may be an arithmetic derivative, I think there might be more than one. And so it's a function defined from integers to integers with the following four characteristics or four rules that it satisfies. So d of 0 is the same thing as d of 1, which is 0. d of any prime is equal to 1. d satisfies this thing called the Leibniz rule or the product rule, like from calculus. So this is d of mn is d of m times n plus m times d of n. Then finally, d of negative n is equal to negative d of n. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples first and then maybe compare and contrast this with the normal derivative. So let's first maybe do d of 12. So that's going to be d of 2 times 6. We can use our product rule to write that as d of 2 times 6 plus 2 times d of 6, but I'll write 6 as 2 times 3. Because at the moment, our goal is to get this all the way down to primes so that we know how to evaluate it. So now d of 2 is equal to 1 because 2 is prime. So that gives us 6 plus 2 times, let's see, we'll have d of 2 times 3 plus 2 times d of splitting that up using the Leibniz rule again. So again, these are both primes. So we get a 1 here and we get a 1 here. So that gives us 3 plus 2 times 2. So that'll give us 10 plus 6 is 16. Now, maybe one of the first things that you learn about in calculus after learning the derivative is the power rule for derivatives. So maybe we'd like to figure out if there's some sort of power rule for this arithmetic derivative. So let's maybe look at an example first. Let's maybe calculate d of 125. I'm picking 125 because that is d of 5 cubed. Okay, so we can use our Leibniz rule a couple of times to break this into, you know, d evaluated at our prime 5. So maybe first we can write this as d evaluated at 5 times 25 and then plus 5 times d evaluated at 25. So d evaluated at 5 is 1, so that gives us 25 plus 5 times, then we'll have 5 times d evaluated at 5 plus, let's see, d evaluated at 5 times 5. Just to be sure what I did here, I split this 25 up into 5 times 5, whereas right here I split, split this 5 cubed up into 5 times 25. So now we know that d of 5 is 1 because this is a prime, so both of those are 1. Then we'll have 5 plus 5 is 10, and then we have 10 times 5 which is 50 plus 25 is 75. Okay, but like I said before, we'd like to relate this to the power rule from derivative or from calculus, and we can by noticing that this is d of 5 cubed, which is the same thing as 3 times 5 squared. So the exponent came down and we reduced the exponent by 1. Notice 75 is 3 times 25, so we're good to go there. Okay, so this is looking good. Let's maybe make a claim about this in general and then prove it. So generalizing our example we saw into the following claim, we have if p is prime, then d of p to the n is n times p to the n minus 1. And we'll prove this by induction using our base case, this second bullet point right here, which is kind of a rule built into this arithmetic derivative. So we actually don't need to worry about that. Let's make an induction hypothesis then. So we'll suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1, we have d of p to the k is equal to k times p to the k minus 1. Okay, now we'll look at the next case. So we'll do d of p to the k plus 1. That'll be d of p times p to the k, just using arithmetic rules. But then this will be, let's see, d of p times p to the k plus p times d of p to the k. Now we'll use the fact that this is equal to 1 by our base case or by this second bullet point. 
And then we can use the fact that this is equal to k times p to the k minus 1. Multiplying to this, we'll get another p to the k. So that will leave us with p to the k plus k times p to the k, from which we can factor a p to the k out, leaving us with k plus 1 times p to the k. So we do satisfy this power rule. One thing we don't satisfy is an addition rule. And we can check that very, very quickly by noticing that 1 is equal to d of 2, because 2 is prime, but that's going to be the same thing as d of 1 plus 1, but that is not the same as d of 1 plus d of 1, which is 0 plus 0. So, in fact, this arithmetic derivative uses all of the nice multiplicative properties of the numbers and the multiplicative properties of the derivative, but not the additive properties of the derivative. Okay, so now what we'd like to do is extend this to the rational numbers. So let's extend this arithmetic derivative to the rational numbers. And we can do that fairly reasonably with something that looks a lot like the quotient rule. That'll be d of m over n, so that's our rational number, is d of m times n minus m times d of n over n squared. Well, so you might say rational numbers don't have a unique expression, so isn't there a problem here? But what we'll see is that we're okay, and that is regardless of the expression for our rational number, we get the same value for this function. We'll check that a little bit later. So let's first do this example. We'll do d of 3 over 4. So that ends up being d of 3 times 4 minus 3 times d of 4 over 4 squared, which is 16. Now 3 is a prime, so we know d of 3 is equal to 1. 4 is a power of a prime. It's 2 squared, so that's going to be 2 times 2 to the 1, or 4. So in fact, 4 is a fixed point of this arithmetic derivative. Maybe think about some other fixed points for this arithmetic derivative and post them in the comments. So that leaves us with 4 minus 12 or negative 8 over 16, which is negative 1 half. So now let's do this next example, d of 12 over 2. I'm picking that one because earlier we calculated d of 12. And also this is another expression for 6, which we'll calculate right after this. Okay, so this is going to be d of 12 times 2 minus let's see, 12 times d of 2 all over 2 squared, which is 4. So if you recall, d of 12, which is was equal to 16, then d of 2 is 1. So we have 16 times 2, which is 32, minus 12 is 20. All of this is happening over 4, so we have 20 over 4, which is 5. Now, 12 over 2 is obviously equal to 6, so hopefully d of 6 is also equal to 5. Otherwise, this extension to the rational numbers is not reasonable. So 6 is equal to 3 times 2, so we can write this as 2 times d of 3 plus 3 times d of 2. Either way you look at this, you get 2 plus 3, which is equal to 5. So in fact, these two are the same. That just provides evidence that we're okay. What we really need to do is do a proof that this is okay. So we'll finish this video off by showing that this extension of our arithmetic derivative to the rational numbers is indeed well-defined. And we'll do that by taking two representations of a rational number. We'll take m over n, and then we'll also take a times m over b, a times m over a times n. So in fact, let's calculate d of a m over a n. So that's going to be equal to a times n times d of a m minus a times m times d of a n. Then this is all over a squared times n squared. Okay, so we're off to a good start there. Now notice that we can factor an a out of the numerator and cancel it with one of these a's in the denominator. So let's do that. And that leaves us with just an a to the first power in the denominator. Now let's apply our Leibniz rule to each of these terms. So to this one right here, as well as that one right there. That leaves us with n times um, d of a times m 
plus, let's see, a times d of m, and then we'll have minus m times d of a times n plus a times d of m. Okay, great. So again, that's from expanding both of those. We still have a over n squared in the denominator. Now we can cancel something. So notice we have m times n times d of a minus m times n times d of a. So that means this term right here as well as this term right here cancels, leaving us with this thing right here multiplied by n and this thing right here multiplied by m. Okay, good. But notice both of those have a factor of a, we can factor that out. So factoring that out, that'll leave us with a, and then we'll have d of m times n from this term minus m times d of n, then this is all over a times n squared. Now, one last thing to do would, would be to cancel this a in the denominator with this a in the numerator, and then recognize with that what we're left with is exactly this d of m over n. So here we have d of m over n. But this calculation is exactly what we needed for this extension to be well-defined. And that's a good place to stop.